Beyond Bitcoin Hangouts are meant to give everyone a voice, a chance to speak with others who are passionate advocates for expanding the blockchain's use cases out into the world and beyond. Do you have a crypto community you would like to represent and hold open hangouts for? If so, you might find yourself on the path to owning a stake in Beyond Bitcoin. We are looking for people who care about people, people who want to bring others together, because crypto communities are people. Beyond Bitcoin is a movement of thinkers and doers in the crypto space. And if you feel you are one of them, reach out to beyondbitcoin at gmail.com for more information on how to debut your community's efforts to reach to the stars and beyond. Today is Friday, February 3rd, 2017. Welcome to everybody to the next Beyond Bitcoin Hangout. We do this every week with various people who are participating in the blockchain ecosystem and economy. There's this new technology that's not so new, but is new. We've been into it, a lot of us, since the very beginning, uh, upwards of nine years now. Some of us have been looking for blockchain technology for even longer who are in this group. Uh, but all of us have been looking at blockchain technology and what it can do beyond simple but powerful use cases like Bitcoin. So we get together every week and everybody who has a project is free and open to join up to Steam it RSVP at the Beyond Bitcoin tag, our RSVP thread that we post within 24 hours of these hangouts which are every Friday, and you can post there and leverage your community, bring them onto Steam, have them upvote you to get onto our Hangouts. Um, this is a, a good way in the wild, wild west of the blockchain free market to gauge the trust of actors who are working in here, um, to be able to, to join up and ask them questions uh, and be able to receive honest responses is a very valuable tool. And we take this very seriously to be able to offer that to you. So with that said, be a participant, join up, listen, spread the word about what we do and all the projects that feel free to join up and talk about what they're doing on a weekly basis, uh, just to provide the updates to the people who are interested in what you're up to. So with that said, we're going to start this week with Peer Plays. We're going to move into Mr. Wang, who's going to be covering Wang Change. Then we're going to be meeting up with Virtual Growth to see what's going on in his ecosystem and his little sphere of things that he's up to. And then we're going to move on to App Trade, which is going to be a very cool project that is going to be ICOing using Open Ledger. So with that said, uh, Data Security Node and Crypto Prometheus are here today to talk about peer plays. Are you guys available and able to talk? Yes, both of, both of us are here today. I noticed. This is, this is, is Crypto Prometheus getting sleep these days? Not all that much. Nope. I haven't gotten any <laughs> sleep for about a month and a half. Uh, you just decided to slide on in here then, huh? Real quick. Yeah, I, I love you guys too much. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't stay away. Well, we can't stay away from you, buddy. So what are, what are the updates? Let, let me go ahead and step back and let you guys provide what you guys do the best and, and give all the updates on what's going on in your sphere of uh, the graphene ecosystem. Thank you very much, Fuzzy. Uh, my name is Jonathan Bahai. I am the president of Bunker Chain Labs, the company which is heading up the Peer Plays project as of today. Uh, very, uh, exciting, very exciting times for Peer Plays. Uh, today, I would like to... Uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the technological advancements uh, we've made with peer plays. So as some of you who are familiar with Graphene know, uh, it is a toolkit which is built in C++ primarily. And uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, some people have uh, different ideas in regards to uh, being able to utilize it and being able to uh, uh, be able to develop on it easily. So when it came to peer plays, we had to look at uh, what we were in regards to being able to uh, build uh, games or at least be able to create toolkits which would make it easy for developers in order to create games to use the peer plays blockchain. 
So in that, uh, in that search and in that uh, 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 research that we did, uh, we finally decided that the best thing for us to do is to uh, place peer plays in a stream that already exists with many developers and uh, that many developers of a, of a, of a gaming engine, uh, which is successful. So uh, we decided, and what we have developed is uh, an API interface, which works with the Unity gaming engine. Uh, Unity gaming engine is very popular. Uh, as a matter of fact, in uh, Q3 of 2016, there were over 5 billion downloads of Unity games. Uh, there are 2.4 billion mobile Unity games out, out in the marketplace today. There are over 770 million uh, users of Unity gaming apps. That's twice the size of Twitter. And, and uh, there's also 4.5 million gaming developers that use uh, the Unity gaming platform uh, in order to create their games. So uh, with the uh, API interface uh, and the library that we've created uh, that was working with peer plays. Uh, basically, anybody who is a Unity gaming developer is going to have the capability to much more easily interface with the peer plays blockchain for their games. So this means that essentially uh, we're going to be able to tap into this massive uh, millions and millions and millions, if not hundreds of millions of users that we've talked that uh, are currently playing these games uh, that would be able to utilize peer plays on the back end uh, for creating tournaments, uh, for being, uh, add uh, other various uh, uh, elements of the peer plays blockchain, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, basically power up <laughs> all those existing games that are out there and uh, give an opportunity to those millions of gaming developers that currently are um, you know, they, they basically are using fiat and uh, there are challenges with that, as many of you know. So uh, for this week, uh, I just wanted to give the reveal on some of the technology uh, that is going into the Pure Plays blockchain and uh, what's going to be possible with it. And uh, that's that's all I'm going to be giving for today. Uh, we, we will be having more information on the upcoming uh, crowdfund in the future. Uh, but uh, for this week, I just wanted to highlight uh, one of the many uh, interesting uh, technological aspects of Pure Plays. And, uh, this is the first time that we have talked about this one because uh, it is uh, something which we've held kind of close to our chest because we're very excited. But uh, the architecture has been completed and uh, um, every, everything else about it is just uh, really exciting. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all the update for this week. And uh, if there are questions, and probably to go into more details about this, uh, I'll be passing this on to Michael. Well, real quick, does anybody have any questions for data? Um, I have, uh, I can, I'm looking at reading the, the side channel here. Uh, T-Bone, can you uh, elaborate a little more on what you mean by that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. Okay, so the question that T-Bone asked here um, is, have you guys considered creating a unique free role offering by integrating that portion of the service with the Steam blockchain? So, um, you know, the reality is uh, uh, creating a, a user-issued asset on the on the PeerPlace uh, network, um, you know, PeerPlace has the same UIA capabilities as BitShares. And so um, playing games for user-created tokens is something that will be uh, available and, and doable. So I guess that maybe maybe that answers your questions. Yeah, I, I know you asked about integrating with Steam. Um, there there are um, what what we're doing with Peer Plays is is um, or what we're building and and uh, for the Peer Plays project is um, it, it's nothing nothing that we have uh, set up in the in the near future is is um, is uh, ser server side. I, I guess what I mean by that is uh, individuals plugging into peer plays uh, will be able to use server architecture if they wish. But um, the 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 native blockchain we're we're focused on building on chain games right now. Um, so uh, you know we have the rock paper scissors prototype that we put out. Um, as Jonathan mentioned, we have a uh, Unity uh, API library that we've had uh, built and are continuing to build. Um, of which Rock, Paper, Scissors will be one of the many games that we uh, uh, have three-dimensional uh, uh, interfaces for. Um, and, 
And uh, as far as integrating, to answer your question, as far as integrating with other blockchains, um, there's a lot of technical te technological uh, 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 challenges there. Um, unless you're, you know, talking about having centralized services that that sort of mediate between the two. Um, not that that is impossible. Um, there, there's really so many possibilities, uh, you know, when you get into the the details of of how things can be done. But um, in essence. Uh, you know, for the time being, uh, our main focus is on creating uh, fully trustless on-chain games, um, so we can really kick this thing off uh, as a, uh, a provably fair, an example of provably fair uh, gaming on the blockchain. Um, and of course, you know, I'll, I'll say the magic word that everybody loves to hear. Um, you know, when when the technology exists for true trustless side chains. Um, you know, it will be possible to, to link directly uh, to other blockchains such as Steam and, and Bitcoin and, and really everything. Uh, but for now, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the focus of the, of the development work that we're, that we're funding um, is, uh, is, is based on um, the, the build, building up the infrastructure around the, the main um, peer place blockchain. So yeah, um, T-Bone, you know, if you've got I, I, I may have misunderstood the, the nuance or the detail of what it is you're talking about, so I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question directly. But hopefully that was uh, a little bit uh, brought a little more clarity to anyone else who was, was may have been wondering. wondering. He says it'd be a free roll experience like nothing else in the industry. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, it's it's funny. There's so much of what's happening right now is really like nothing else that's ever happened. So. <laughs> um, Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. I mean, um, like I said, there's there's really uh, one of the ch so <laughs> I'll, I'll go back through through history a little bit. You know, one of one of the things that uh, we discovered very early on, back in uh, well, late 2013, maybe early 2014, when when the BitShares community was just starting to sort of coalesce, was uh, the reality that there is so much possibility and there's so many ideas out here uh, out there that can be done with all this technology. And um, the biggest challenge uh, in the end is to, um, to, to narrow your focus down and, and work on one particular thing and do it and do it really well. Um, and, that, and that is something that we're very adamant about. Um, and it's something that has even um, sort of played out in the course of, of this project. Um, you know, we had uh, many different ideas that we presented in the beginning. And, and, and of course, all of these things are possible with the technology we're using. But um, we had to, you know, in the end, uh, like you do with any sort of development, uh, make specific uh, choices uh, in direction uh, that we thought would be um, you know, the most loop uh, for everyone involved. Um, at the end of the day, uh, true success in blockchain projects, we believe, is going to come in their ability to uh, make money. Uh, you know, I use the term money loosely, but uh, generate uh, uh, revenue generating opportunities for the people who are involved. Um, you know, if we want to uh, build this into something that, uh, you know, can be uh, sustainable for the future, uh, that's a, a very key concern. And so, um, you know, naturally, uh, you know, the, the, we, we, uh, we, we've, we've been continuing to refine our approach um, to, uh, to narrow our focus into uh, the, the, the markets and the, and the, and the um, specific games in the industry that are going to uh, have the possibility of bringing in uh, the most revenue uh, and therefore generate the most, uh, you know, uh, rewards for our holders. Because um, as probably most of you in this room no although if those are listening that aren't in this room i'm looking at a lot of familiar faces here but uh, just to recap uh peer plays is a uh, will be a profit uh, sharing token uh, which means that all of the revenues that are brought in by the network will be uh, prorated out to the holders of peer plays so um, you know that said uh, you know we we have always felt that it was our responsibility um, um, as the as the uh, as the as the founders and the directors to um, uh, get this thing off the ground with uh, with uh, as uh, as Stan likes used to like to be fond of saying uh, big fat rocket boosters and uh, so that's what we're uh, that's what we're working on. He said, Talkinator says if you can discuss, does the Unity client connect directly to the blockchain or go th go through an intermediate layer, e.g., a web API at PeerPlace.com? Nope. The, uh, the Unity client is, uh, we, we, we're, de we've developed a, a blockchain API, so there won't be any, uh, there won't be any, um, you know, URL that you're pointing at. It'll, yeah, it'll connect directly with the blockchain. 
Yeah, it's really, you know, the web, the web we've always kind of considered, uh, you know, anything that needs the web is sort of a shortcut to what we're really trying to do. And, um, you know, furthermore, the, the, the nature of the reality of what we're building, um, you know, there's still, you know, truthfully, a lot of risk out there with, with uh, you know, having centralized services um, and then, you know, adding the, the, the wagering and the gambling uh, uh, aspect on top of it, you know, just puts significant get more risk. So, um, you know, we, we've really focused on um, building the, the, the sort of the cream of the cream of the uh, a crop of technologies, which is, you know, how do we get this all onto the blockchain with very, very minimal, if, if any, uh, need to be interfacing uh, with any sort of centralized, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, services that are heavily reliant on a, on a, on a human counterparty or a, uh, you know, geographical counterparty. So, um, you know, that said, um, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't move in any direction um, that requires, uh, you know, actual spending of resources. And, and unless we uh, have, have thought a lot about the scalability, uh, the implications and, and future proofing of, of uh, you know, what it is that we, uh, what it is we're attempting to do. So of course, yeah, naturally we, <laughs> naturally when we thought about the API, it was, uh, well, you know, we're, uh, you got you got to connect right to the blockchain, and what's what's awesome about Graphene is you've just got uh, you know you can add new features and um, you can thread it into the into an API. Um, right now, there's a good JavaScript library out there, um, which is what the you know the web wallets use for bit shares, and um, you know I know Steemit Steemit of course course has its old and its, its own uh, API calls and and um, you know so uh, yeah so unity was was a natural choice for uh, being able to connect uh, and you know make calls to the blockchain virtual growth was saying that he would explain virtual are you available or able to talk yes you said that you would be able to explain how this would work plugging into the steam blockchain for these uh, free roll heads up tournaments Okay, Steam is free. The thing is that Steam API is different, so it wouldn't work directly, but you could do a payment later. So you could have a Steam pool, because the reward pool is not paid right away anyway, so you could somehow... I've done, like Steam Sports, I've done Steam betting contests, the votes, so people would vote, that would be counted, and then you have a bunch of rules, voting on the post, making comments or whatever, and then you have a script checked based on those rules. And then you want another script to do a payment pool later. I'm not entirely sure how that would work with the game. I've been thinking about it, obviously. I'm looking at different aspects of it. And the peer plays opening up other things itself would be interesting. Well, I just wanted to make sure that it was covered because it seems like T-Bone was saying that you know what he's talking about as far as enough to describe it on, in, in the audio. Um, I don't know if crypto and data have any answers for you right now, obviously, after just hearing it, but maybe they do. Do you guys have anything you'd like to say? Well, T-Bone said something about uh, no need to actually do anything with the stock uh, Steam blockchain itself, which, no, they wouldn't. So it would be a centralized service that they would offer on their own side. Well, you can use part of Steam and do posts on Steam. But... Okay, well... Um... Just had mute for a sec. There was a little bit of echo. Um, you can use Steam as part of it, but it wouldn't be automated. The API is a little tricky, as we've mentioned before. But you could definitely mm -hmm. do a different interaction in the future with another website and use part of those features, I believe. Well, it would be something interesting for you guys to talk about, I guess. I, I, I really, unfortunately, we are going over in time now. Um, not by too much, but I would like to ask Crypto and Prometheus and Data Security Note, is there anything that you would like to finish on or, uh, you know, after following that up, any way that people can reach out to you if they want to participate or help with the project? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Virtual Matt. You know, um, I, I'd absolutely have to look a little bit more into it. There's there, <laughs> there's so many good ideas out there. It's really, uh, like I mentioned before, it's 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 usually a challenge for me to to stay focused on one particular thing because I always want to, uh, you know, want to find uh, improvements. And and um, I think I, I will just end by saying that um, I I personally believe, and I'll say this as uh, you know a representative of of the project that. Um, that I think there's a lot of opportunity for Pure Plays and Steam uh, to work together potentially in the future, um, and I mean that sort of loosely, and that the communities work 
together um, and the technologies are, are obviously very compatible um, so there are going to be enormous opportunities uh, for this and uh, that 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 brings me a lot of excitement um, but all that said uh, I'll just wrap up and, and say thank you to everybody again uh, today and um, if you guys want to check out uh, the Pure Plays project please uh, stop over at uh, pureplays.com uh, that's where uh, all the main information is we've got a countdown clock there uh, leading up to our crowd sale um, we will have the, the crowd sale information as soon as we possibly can. Uh, there's a lot going on right now behind the scenes and, and uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, strategic uh, that we've been uh, um, talking with over these last months. And, um, you know, so it's a very, very busy time for us. Um, and, uh, yeah, so if you want to, um, we got that. We got our Steam uh, handle, which is uh, at PeerPlays. Um, and uh, the Rocket Chat channel as well, which is https colon slash slash uh, pureplays.chat. Um, so thank you very much, guys. I will uh, see you soon. Next up is Mr. Wang, and he's going to be talking about Wang change. Uh, Mr. Wang, are you available? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. You got that mic turned up and the beat in your head? <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and step back and let you do what you do, man. Um, it's going to be very cool to hear the progress that you make with this coin. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm getting excited by the day, man. Just thinking about it, <clears throat> um, creating these videos and everything. And that's one thing too, man. I'm uh, like, I've been on a roll, and whenever it comes to me, like actually doing these videos, you know, I, I start building up momentum and my creativity. You know, it's already flowing. My imagination's off the hook, you know, and. Sh the more I do, the hotter I get, the more juices flow, the more ideas I get. And so I was just uh, reading a post uh, just yesterday and it like immediately spawned an idea. And I, I reached out to that person, or I think it was two days ago, and uh, offered them an idea that might help, help them promote their channel. I mean, promote their uh, their coin and uh, also, uh, you know, uh, like help help us both out, basically. And uh, they really because you have Wang Change. For those who are not familiar with it, you oh, you yeah. just created Wang Change, right? Yeah, Wang Change. I forgot I forgot about that. <laughs> well, well yeah. but Wang Change is something that you created that is going to help. That is meant to help you build up kind of like a an infrastructure to be able to really start pushing out the videos based off not unhindered by uh, by render time, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, Wing Change basically. I created Wing Change, um, and Wing Change. I guess the the name itself represents so many different things. You know, uh, uh, first off, uh, standing up for people who don't have a voice, and also promoting change. Not you know, inspiring change, inspiring people to think different about stuff. You know, to to look at it from a different perspective. And uh, with all that. I want to offer my, you know, I want to offer myself, you know, I, I create all this stuff. I, I create these videos and I, and I release them. You know, I do it like, like they're flapjacks, you know, <laughs> just popping out videos left and right. And you're doing and, it for uh, other people. I see all the time. Yeah. Not taking I, any credit for it. Exactly. You know, cause I, it's so easy for me to do these, my, my, you know, this stuff that I see people kind of needing something like that, you know, they, and I'm like, well, let me do that for people. And I just, I don't know, I, I feel like an obligation, not, not a bad obligation. I just feel like it's my responsibility to do that. So how did, how did we get into the Wang change? And, and you have some updates on Wang change, right? If you could give like a little bit of a, just a, a quick intro on that. So everybody understands who hasn't heard it, like the, how you plan on doing it. And then we could go into a little bit about some updates from this week and what's gone on with Wang Change this week. Does that feel good? Yeah, that's cool. We can do that. <clears throat> All right. I'll sit on back. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so basically, um, if you're not familiar with Wang Change, basically, I created Wang Change as a token uh, to represent the value of my work. I guess somebody uh, mentioned it as proof of work, uh, somebody said, and I'm not too familiar with it. Now, let me remind you, I'm not too familiar with the lingo and I'm very new to the whole crypto scene and stuff. So I'm learning all that stuff. But <clears throat> what I figured was with this token, I can offer my services and each token represents 
an hour, you know, my an hour of my time working on these videos, uh, creating for Steam it and Bitshare, the Steam it and Bitshares community, or any graphene related community. And it's a, it's an hour of my work and one hour of the time it takes to render each project. Um, and th that's basically what one token means right there. That's it, that's each token. Now, my whole plan is to offer these videos and keep because I'm gonna keep creating anyways. <laughs> it's an addiction. That's it's it's my high. That's what I do as an entertainer. And as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and backtrack to that too. I, I'm a professional actor. I work in Hollywood just like Solly does. I have a, a experience in production as an actor and as a producer. And I and so I grew up into this business and now I'm I've I've taken it onto the crypto scene. So here we are with the wing change. <laughs> and with uh, basically, you know, like I mentioned, you know, an hour of my production services, a labor time and an hour of render time. Now, I had I have the amount of render time uh, set pretty high or whatever, because my system, my and all that stuff is in need of uh, I've produced so many videos. My hardware is actually starting to take a toll now, you know, so I need to upgrade the hardware to keep producing at a competitive level to keep to, to raise the standard, the value of the, of the videos that I create, because everybody is asking for more videos. Everybody's starting to want more video, you know, like they're starting to look towards me and, you know, request me doing stuff. And I have no problem doing that. But it's taken a toll on my on my system and on the top of that i'm going to start booking up these projects and building them up so much that you know it's it's i'm not able to to uh, manage them correctly and i'm looking to build another system so i can actually just render all these videos on the side while i work on some more videos i think i might have got y'all lost there didn't mean to so, do that. so earlier on t-bone asked you um you know is the value of these tokens going to go down over time um and that would be considered something that's bad right um what i was going what i was going to say is essentially what you're doing is you're trying to free up the render time so you can make you can actually focus on making more videos right yeah yeah like i said and i'm i'm i'm, I'm popping these videos out like <laughs> flapjacks I, like i make a video <laughs> i've made Three, four videos in the past couple of days just uh, talking about how, you know, talking about bit shares and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's, but I could be doing more. Um, I, I want to reduce that render time. And if I get that render time reduced, the value of the token gets reduced because now I'm able to, because my equipment's upgraded, my system's running great. I have a render farm. I have something I can take to render uh, on the side and let that sit overnight. And it won't take up, you know, from me working on projects on my main system. And this makes the work faster. This allows me to produce more and be more efficient. So, you know, th that's basically why the value of the token goes down. Now, people will say, okay, well, yeah, that probably sound, that sounds bad. What, you know, why would you want your token to lose value? Well, I have a stable price. I, I have a fixed price that I have. I want to have the token valued at, which is the value, the basic value of my work. So once it reaches that, when you purchase the tokens at that time, you will be getting double. Uh, well, by that time, maybe quadruple the token. See, as as more tokens are purchased, I'm able to upgrade these uh, the hardware, you know, purchase the right equipment. And as that render time goes down, I will double the, value, mm -hmm. you know, double the token that you purchase and then eventually <clears throat> triple it. And then, like I said, at the end, maybe quadruple it in exchange of one, you know, in exchange for that purchase of token. And there was a value proposition that you were, I, I think that you also were talking about the dividends or, well, I don't want to call them dividends because what you're doing is you're, you're essentially taking what you earn from the liquid portion of what you earn from steam and you've been paying it out to the people who hold the tokens, right? Yeah. And, and the thing that uh, I make so many videos on, you know, on steam it, and, and and stuff that you know, I consistently have a good generated revenue income that I'm making off of these videos. Now, I was like, well, if I'm doing that, you know, I'm, I might as well share it with everybody who's actually invested in it. 
you know so i mean and that's one thing i've been thinking about too is this can not you know not only will this be a holding stock in you know the videos that i'm creating but yes i'm a steam it celeb like we talked about last week but this can also kind of be like a celeb token too because basically i'm creating for you guys for steam it for other members and you know i'm turning around and putting those rewards back into the token and and paying dividends to everybody you know because if, if you guys support me why not show y'all some love some love that y'all actually appreciate you know i mean i, I appreciate the stuff that you are you know the support and and all that that i'm getting from you guys so why not pay it back yeah it seems like uh you know a win all around to everybody personally i, 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 I and, there's, it, I, and there's one thing i wanted to add to me and the virtual growth are talking about um having actually offering an option to purchase you know a fraction of the token um, and just having the like a point, you know, b purchasing like uh, trading point two or something for the of the token, and just having that point two of a token will allow you know I can give you some consultation, you know, have a consultation or something, offer some very basic services that can you know something that you, you can build up to or look forward to, or get me started on developing ideas. Well, real quick, one question that I would ask because last week. We talked a little bit about it. Have you thought about talking to Talkinator or I think it was Solly uh, and and trying to get together like a, uh, the actual specs that laid out for what you would like to have and what you're looking at and maybe or crowdsource it? Or iHash Freery seems to have some good insights on how to do a render farm as well. See, I think it would be really cool to to kind of utilize the hive brain here because <laughs> there's a lot of power here, man. Um, there's a lot of resources if if we're interested in using them. Yeah. No. Um, are you talking about the community itself as, as far as resources? Yeah, I'm talking about there's a lot of expertise here. I mean, oh, yeah. all of these people are nerds. Knowledge resources. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. no. Uh, um, I... I didn't necessarily get to uh because I what my plan is to actually sit down and see. I say about maybe uh six months ago I sat down and started looking at stuff that I wanted to upgrade and uh because yeah I needed to, I need a render farm yeah um I, I want to be able to transfer from one computer to another and just have that just render shit out the whole time and you know come back to it when it's you know when it's done and you know load it up to wherever it needs to go. But yeah, um, I, I do need to connect with these guys and talk about what other options there are to make it easier. But the value of your work's going to go up as you keep producing more and more videos. So it really incentivizes you to continue producing videos. If everybody upvotes you who has your tokens, like they should consider doing, they're going to help upvote and get their payments up, right? There's going to be a lot of stuff that they can do with that. I think it's really... Good job, yeah. man. Yeah, the, the video is going to be made regardless. And if you, I mean, even if you look at my profile, <laughs> my, 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 the, the money I'm generating is just steadily rising. Um, my followers are growing. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to brag, but it is what it is. I create and people love it. And that's just on, that's the, that's real, just on the producing side. You know, like, I know what I have is good and I'm going to be doing it either way. It, so, why you know it's like why not have I'm community returning the favor and showing the love dude yeah you're <laughs> uh well i know where i stand on it uh i would urge everybody to can to look at what he's doing because he's very much bit shares centric helping out with bit shares and other uh cryptocurrencies potentially uh and uh, you've helped a lot of people on steam it i mean i i have to say to be honest with everybody here i have seen you doing a lot and helping uh, pretty much free of charge. So I support you, uh, and I know that you know I'm going to be buying some of your tokens. So um, I'll leave it at that. How much have you paid out thus far? Uh, right now, um, the last payout I did was, uh, I think, um, I think it was like 15 SBD off of uh, one, you know, one or two posts. Uh, but I'm looking to do that, uh, do payouts like on a weekly basis, and uh, you know, that was just. Uh, uh, a very simple <laughs> like test, like case. test case yeah pretty much 
Because you're learning it, man. You're you're in there in the BitShares client with your nose getting dirty, man. You're learning it. Yeah, yeah it, it's man. I could pretty much say I jumped in already with my nose dirty because I've just been like really trying to you know figure out anything and everything. So I'll, I, <laughs> I've been looking through any kind of resources I can uh, I can find. So you know I come in with from somewhere else and I'm able to to the next thing that I'm I'm, I'm learning about. So. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I mean, feel free to butt in. Yeah, actually, I would, I would actually welcome some uh, anybody who does have comments. I mean, like, because yeah, if anybody has ideas, I'm help, welcome to help with consultation. As well, I've been talking to Mister uh, Wang with certain ideas. See, because uh, one thing I want to say too is um, the kind of mentality I have is a creator. I. I only, my imagination takes me on another level. So just presenting, you know, any kind of idea or, you know, project that you might have, I'm going to give you something or I'm going to come up with an idea that's way out of left field, but relevant to the, to the message you're trying to, to give. And this, and this isn't only on the production side and creating videos for you. I'm talking about ideas and opportunities to market anything that you're trying to market from a completely different uh, set of uh, uh, or mentality that, that you would never even think about. Something that I've been able to do since I was a kid. It just happens. It comes to me naturally. So if you do have a project and you're trying to figure out or you, you feel like you're missing something, uh, I might be able to offer, you know, an idea or a, you know, like creating a promotion where I just like there's one thing in, in, in the industry, and I'm pretty sure you guys know about it, called product placement. All right. Just mentioning you in my one of my skits, you know, that's 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 not that's an opportunity to get your name out there or, you know, your your project idea. I can create a skit that will get people wondering what the hell is he talking about? Let me find out more about that. There's Man, one, yeah. You know, so it's not only on the video production uh, and creating badass looking graphics. I'm talking about stuff that I do or say. I'm a presenter. I'm a face waiting to be put on whatever it is I need to be put on to represent that. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I know personally that I would like to see whatever specs you're wanting to put out, uh, what you're wanting to get, you know, what you're what you're going to get for it uh, to spec out some some potential like really what's the best route, right? But it's a very interesting way of doing it. There's also somebody in here who was it? Uh, I Hash Fury was showing there are render farms where you can go to, where you can actually like, you don't even necessarily need to buy the equipment or upgrade it. It might actually be cheaper for you. To uh, outsource it? You're talking about the render farms? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, might as well look into it. No, it won't be cheaper. <laughs> It won't be, Sully. No, I mean, you've looked. I mean, you've looked into it. I'm sure, if of anybody else in here who has. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it, it's it, it all depends on your business model, why you're rendering, how you make money. That'll more determine like why you would choose a rendering farm for your video versus doing it on your own kind of system, where obviously you're paying for the electric bill and stuff. So that will really determine you would go with that kind of rendering system versus your own. Um, Inter Inter Interesting that I just was looking over there at that server farm thing, and, and they use Boink, which is a, a, a Gridcoin kind of a thing. I think they inter Gridcoin introduced Boink to our community some time ago, and they're using that as a basis for their uh, rendering I thought, farms. I thought, I thought that Boink, it was, it was either possible or they have already had one. Looks like it's out there right now. That's that link that ha I hash free put out there. Uh, I was just reading a couple of uh, posts for one of the entries in there, and they were talking about how they were using Boink for uh, managing their their rendering. That's we should. I mean, we we could look into it. Why not? Let's see. How they, big are these they, projects that they're that they're rendering though? Too. Yeah. It, I mean, they would be pretty big projects. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that, and that's where that's where the difference. I mean, if you're talking about rendering, you know, a 15, 20 minute movie, you know, and then like doing three of them, you know, okay, yeah, that's something to think about. <laughs> but when you're doing, you know, yeah. one one of those, you know, uh, a five to ten minute, you know, promotional video or 
you know, skit, that's, that's something that could be managed, uh, you know, on my end. That's true. It's just a matter of time and, and, and organization because if, let's put it this way, Mr. Wang, if, if, if you could render that five or ten minute video on your own hardware in, let's say, a few hours, what if you could do it in uh, 30 seconds? I mean, maybe you could get more throughput if you did it that way. But again, you guys are probably more on top of this stuff <laughs> than I ever would be in terms of looking at the costs involved. 30 second rendering, that would be freaking amazing. I would love that and i and i yeah. can't wait for that day to happen yeah that would be freakishly crazy quantum computing insane. baby Man, quantum that, computing. That would, well, yeah, if you have massively be... if you massively parallel process everything i can see where that's possible but you know i don't know what the costs involved like you were just saying if you had three or you know two or three 15 minute videos that's going to take a while maybe those services would be useful well i mean if you scale it then maybe it would be useful even on smaller videos it just reduces the time but again you have to investigate it to see whether that's viable and whether it's cost effective well there's one thing too i want to uh tell you guys like you know this consider this the way what i'm starting right now as uh like a phase one because there's there's obviously you know a bigger and far greater scale that i envision the possibilities of us getting to and you know this is including Solly and all that stuff of what we eventually want to do now me being able to provide that you know is what you know right now what i want to make sure i get i set in stone and offer you guys but having a team building a team i have my cinematographer here and stuff so you know like i can build a team and eventually be you know spread out that work amongst the team when it's all said and done and what were you, that I mean, can do is off, you know, I can, I can break, do a budget breakdown and stuff like that and see what I have and, 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 you know, maybe create a graph for you guys and stuff. That sounds like a wonderful idea. I think that that would, that would just show people that you know exactly what you're looking for. And there are people here, I think at I hash fury and somebody else offered at one point in time to, uh, look at stuff with you. If the, if you wanted, I don't know what your level of expertise is on it personally so uh, don't take it as offense if you are like you know you've got everything specked out in your head you just haven't put put it on paper or something but there are opportunities potentially here as well yeah I'm, I, i've been trying to gaze at the comments but i've just been on a roll talking and stuff and that's the other thing too is i know last last week i might have came off like i don't know what i'm talking about computer parts and stuff uh, but i want to address yeah i do i do i am very familiar with computers and stuff like that i um and as far as hardware and specs and stuff so i can be a little bit more detailed with that uh, when necessary yeah i well since you you're talking to a bunch of nerds i think it's best way of moving forward personally oh yeah definitely <laughs> Fair i enough, know that's what just sounded really bad well if anybody wants to help you out or work with you in some way shape or form or offer advice or or ask for help in some way shape or form uh, how do they reach out to you um got the uh the new uh wang change um uh, wang change the uh mr wang on steam it at gmail.com and uh you know it's like a brand new spanking fresh email right there for you guys and uh yeah that'd be the best thing right there or discord or um yeah probably discord too you can direct message me on there awesome deal man uh and that would be mr wang on discord yes, sir. mr wang on discord all one all together no period after mr Correct. It's all, all together. Mr. Wing. No, no period or nothing. Uh, app trade says uh, in LA. No, I, I work, I back and forth, uh, whenever I get a call or got to work in LA or whatever, I'll fly over there or work. Um, my production that I work with is in LA. Um, so, you know, I'm either working as an actor or working in production over there if I'm needed, but I stay here in Houston, Texas and travel close by as local as an actor. Man, you could spread you could spread the word of this stuff all around in those circles. But anyway, yeah, anyway. that's one thing too is that you got the Super Bowl uh, in in my city, and I was like, man, if I was wearing, if I had a freaking uh, a shirt to represent the stuff that I'm doing, I can go out into downtown and just start like interviewing people. Hey, what do you think about this? Do you know about <laughs> you know about bitch shares? You know about steam it? You know, and just like spread the word to all these people who are here for Super Bowl. Well, I look forward to seeing some of the stuff, man. Um, thank you for joining us today, obviously. Providing 
these insights that you provide, giving some feedback for the people who have questions or comments is very important. And not every project does it. Uh, they, they kind of hope that it'll be lost in, you know, pages and pages of, of text and we'll get, we'll never get a voice. So, um, yeah. um thank you guys. And, uh, redemption has been made. Well, I think that we're moving out of the time where there were skeleton clones as much that are successful. You kind of have to have a group of people who are actually like putting their, their reputations on the line for blockchain technology these days. Uh, which is a good step, I think. But what what you also have is, you know, a lot of people who in the past would create projects with no intention of finishing them, just making a beautiful ICO for a pump um, or, you know, launching a clone just for the sake of mining a large portion of it, unleashing it, and then selling it. Uh, we're now starting to see tokens backed by value propositions and cryptographically secure by a blockchain. So thank you, Mr. Wang. <laughs> okay, thank <laughs> you guys. Helping, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I got plenty to offer, man. Virtual Growth is going to be talking a little bit about what he's up to. And Virtual Growth, is there any specific thing that you were wanting to bring up today? Or is it a host of various things because I know you get into a lot of you're a busy man in this ecosystem. Tokens. The tokens. The bit shares tokens. So you're so you're trading them and you're doing what else with them? Um I'll get into that. <laughs> okay. I'll step back and let you, buddy. Okay, um one minute. I'm just gonna share a post. Anyways, all right. So, so um I'm gonna touch on the Steam Prentice as well because there's gonna be a uh share of the curation awards distributed to the contributing members. I'm doing that monthly now. Uh, the chat group is up to almost 300 members. And then I'm going to talk about the tokens, the BitShare user assets. I've been sharing with people. I get Braille from Instructor 2121's group. I have Wang Change from Mr. Wang, so I've been talking to him behind the scenes. And people thank me uh, for doing stuff behind the scenes, which I tend to do. I tend to just do a bunch of stuff. I have which been is awesome. Creating a, thank you. I mean, creating a report, it includes all the different, um, those tokens traded against Steam, Pay, BitShares, and other tokens. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. And Steam Prentice Group is doing well. I also have Steam as an asset, which I'm not sure exactly what I was going to do with it yet. I, I have decided to, with like Trail, Steam Trail gives out Trail for curators and people who follow the curation trail with votes. Um, think they're doing the same thing with Steep. It wants to follow Steam Prentice on streaming. Uh, periodically, I will give out Steep as a token to thank those people and to share value. Steam Prentice, I've changed the way it's done. Initially, it was done to vote for people who contributed. So we still vote for those people. I also vote for the top curation people. We have about a half a dozen members in Steam Prentice that are the top curating authors on steam it which is great because they help us so we help them and it'll work together i haven't done as much in steam Prentice lately i hope to do more and um working with trail which i mentioned i attended meetings with them every day last month more so lately i've been busy with other things too i get trail for following and then i also provide it as a market maker for trail and task manager and i'm given i was doing a giveaway at one point and task Manager has been doing that, so I've met all together in a new post which updates with charts. And I've included tokens that are featured on Beyond Bitcoin as well, including Salsert. And partially because of my report, Salsert's been bought, purchased with Steam. And I also mentioned Block, so as a way to get people involved and have a central source to see how they're all doing. If anybody wants to ask questions or anything, feel free. I'll pause. Well, I'll ask if anybody has any questions specifically about this. I have a couple questions that are tangentially related. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, my question is, were you here for the BTS hangout, the BitShares hangout? Yes. Yes, I was. Um, you're kind of the perfect man because if, I, I mean, you're already opening up all these stated markets. Are, are you manually trading or are you using a bot already? Manually trading. And 
you seemed I, I seem to recall that you were there and that you said that you were interested. I want to make sure, though, because it was early. Yes, of course. I've been thinking of doing a contest because some podcast groups have asked me to talk about cryptocurrency and investing to help people learn about it. So I was thinking of doing that in some way, shape or form in the future. Well, OK, so they're planning on doing something with this. You already have a kind of an understanding of these markets. So you're planning on working on this project as well, right? Yeah, it's fitting. It definitely fits my interests. I would be interested to see how many people would be would want to join. I mean, if anybody here would be interested in joining up, because I'm really starting to get this itch. Like I used to run bots in video games <laughs> and I haven't run a bot for a while, but I would really like to start running some arbitrage bots. I mean, I think that would be it would be fun, actually, if you're not dealing with a huge amount of money. And if a bunch of people with not a huge amount of money are doing it, and we had like a little group in here that ran during the week and would help each other out or help new people who came in to learn how to do it, uh, I would definitely support the hell out of that. Because I think we could really start supporting people like Solomon, Mr. Wang, all the people who are creating these different tokens. I think we could really create some liquidity on the decks with them and maybe you know earn some of their tokens in the process as we actually get good at it i have one concern with this trading and liquidity and everything is people are talking about people are talking about bots but that's not going to create liquidity that's just going to create it's a it's a responsive liquidity so yes. bots respond to markets but the problem is order books need depth that's something Good traders point. look for and invest. There has to be depth to the order books. So, so bots that, operate on the surface is what you're saying, which is true, really. They they generally operate in the places where they can make money off these little swings, right? And so they're not really – you're talking depth in the order book is you know a, a large amount. Like maybe there's a, a person or a group of people at a certain price who are saying, well, we're going to buy in a large amount if it goes this low. And then it kind of trickles up and it kind of, you know, tapers off as you look at the graph. Right. You can have a bunch of bots. All the bots are going to be doing nothing because there's nothing for them to respond to. There has to be uh, orders on the books for the bots and people and, and liquidity. Liquidity, you look at, you, when you look for liquidity, you look at the order books and they're mostly non-existent for a lot of trading pairs. Well, okay. So let me ask you a question. Have you? You're a you're a nerd. You're sitting here thinking about this stuff all the time, obviously. So, what has your um, magnificent nerd brain come up with for solution potential solutions to that? Do you see like? Do you think it just takes a manual trading group in in addition to the bots? Or what, have you thought about that that part of it? You basically need a bigger user group in BitShares community to be involved and invested in placing orders. Currently, people are holding tokens and looking to do things with tokens, but there's not as much trading. Makes sense. And a few markets definitely have some trading because they have the value there, but other ones not so much yet currently. And have you noticed that the ones that are older – or like does it tend to do you see like the ones that are older just are doing better uh or is there any trends like that when you're looking at the coins well like anything else it's what's trending on google what's popular steam is steam has a market uh bitcoin and steam uh bit shares of course because they're the major ones just like anything you always have your markets and block pay is doing well as too that's becoming a major market i can see that so block pay, block pay seems like a pretty good uh, token right now. Yes, of course. It has a great uh, potential value as well. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I think it's cool what you're getting into. Uh, I don't know that I can manually trade all day. I would personally love to learn to run bots if anybody gets interested in that. Um, I would definitely run bots with you virtual, uh, even though uh, you'd probably manually arbitrage against it and just steal all my money and laugh at me. But um, all jokes aside, does anybody have any questions or comments regarding what virtual growth is doing or would you like well, to work with them in any way? 
Fuzzy, what we could do is if you are setting up the liquidity contest in four weeks, uh, in three weeks could, or in two weeks, we could have a little uh, setup session where we talk about how to set up your own trading bot uh, in, in the BitShares Hangout. And then we just can walk through and say like, okay, this is how you do it. This is how you create the account. Uh, this is how you, you set up the settings and so on. Uh, so that we have really like a lot of fun during that uh, trading contest, and uh, you know we don't need to invest a lot of money. I mean, if you if you put up uh, forty euros, fifty euros, if you sell, tell your bot just to trade in a couple of cents, it is still uh, a very valuable experience, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I will agree. I think that I think that bots. I used to be really against arbitrage bots, but I think that they kind of actually can play a very good role a very healthy role in an economy. Um, it's just kind of, you know, it's almost like you have to make sure that you govern algorithms that so they don't become like dangerous viruses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any other way to say it because there are, you know, algorithms on the stock market because there are people who are really close to it, I guess, maybe. Uh, that's maybe that's why uh, I've heard that it's harder to do that on a blockchain uh, like BitShares. Yeah, the blockchain is just not fast enough to to do like high frequency trading. Uh, but you, you, you look at just at the bot activity we have right now. I mean, uh, three seconds is totally enough to to make that. And I think it maybe slows down also this uh, bigger risk that the bots are just battling each other and then you have like a flash kind of crash like a and all that. Yeah, the speed uh, makes it a little bit more chilling. That's a good point, man. That's and it's not necessarily actually. I mean, it's not a bad thing because it's still fast enough that it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we, we can look into that and uh, see basically what we can learn from these kind of events, and uh, also, yeah, see if we maybe can can set up like some some more bots or specific bots for specific markets, maybe even in combination with a worker. Well. I would know Go ahead, Brindle. I would like to bring up um, a potential issue with user-issued assets, maybe not for block pay uh, user-issued assets, but for ones like I have and uh, virtual growth um, and uh, Mr. Wang. Uh, these are tokens that depend on an individual. And so I'm wondering about uh, key man insurance kind of uh, coverage uh, or... Um, you know, multi-sig or the inheritability of something happens to these individuals, uh, these things pretty much become worthless at the moment. And so, uh, you know, how can that risk be mitigated is what I would like to open up to the community. I think people have to figure out what to do insurance for themselves. It definitely is a definite concern. Uh, I have people that will make sure the liquidity is everything happens to me. The liquidity will be there and then they'll, they'll buy back all the tokens. Um, is this for all of us or is this just on the virtual growth? I mean, cause I know you mentioned me too. No, please. Um, uh, you know, do you have, does somebody else have, uh, you know, your, your private keys to manage your, your token were to happen to you? No, actually, uh, that's something that I can, um, uh, yeah, that's something I'll be able to work on, I guess, see, uh, to find a, a reasonable, uh, solution for that to, you know, yeah. Cause I understand your concern. That does make sense. It's definitely an important thing to address. I've been involved in uh, virtual stock exchanges and virtual worlds, and it was a similar thing, similar concerns. Virtual growth, you hold Wang change, correct? That is correct. Me and you and Wang, Mr. Wang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So you got to pay out too then. Yes, yeah, so it was me and you that got the payouts. See, man, it's, it's just value-driven. Like Steam and BitShares together are going to be powerful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good money right there. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I just make a video and pay it back. <laughs> They're both great mediums to share value with people for what they do, which values work and effort, which is a wonderful thing. Well, are there any other projects that are on your radar that you're looking into? I know that you reach out to a lot of things that are going on. Um, mostly the trail token. I get trail token for curating with my local um my different accounts on Steam, and then I help them with market making. And I show up at those hangouts once in a while to questions about trading and whatnot. And I've been talking to Mr. Wang about different ideas for consultations. Since he gave me tokens, I get value for him, so I try to help him with the value as well. And I'm looking forward to working with the community, which he does as well. So that's what we have in common. 
Oh man, I'll tell you what. I know that Steam Trails is going to be a really cool little project too. I I like how he's doing it. It's real organic. It brings people to you know each community and kind of segments them based on topic. Which you know, let's face it, there are a lot of topics that that warrant their own community. <laughs> so I mean, heck, there's there are a lot of topics that weren't their own sub communities, like multiple communities with with various angles and views on said topic, right? Um, but it's kind of cool to see that they're doing hangouts and they're they have that kind of structure where if you want to create a community, you can. Very much so. I've I've uh, I've been browsing around the whole Steam Trolls uh, thing too, and I've actually came up with uh, a few ideas that. Uh, it might be of interest to them too. Uh, thought they were pretty cool ideas that might be able to help them. Yeah, feel free to let us know, Mr. Wing. I talked to an instructor behind the scenes a fair amount as well about different ideas and whatnot. And that's about it. The Virgo token will be trading all these different tokens as well and growing in value. And I have people trading the different tokens for Virgo. So that's another way of investing in other ones. I'm getting tokens for my token for these different other community tokens and user issue asset tokens. That's a lot. I like tokens. the way you promote it too. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have one. Well, it's just, great because it just works with other people and the people work with me and I, and I work with other people and exchange value and I get value and it kind of grows together. And you just get a portfolio that grows, which is probably why app trade is saying virtual growth. What is your email? <laughs> And that, that kind of makes sense. It is. That's what I enjoy. I did this before in Second Life um, with stock, of course you stock did. exchanges and such. And I grew zero dollars into uh, over a ten thousand dollar business. I was buying and selling <laughs> virtual <laughs> land and virtual stocks. And it kind of fits with the crypto tokens. Yeah, similar, see. <laughs> little similar differences. And, and that's why I was like, man, I, I'm. <laughs> I just, I'm a creator, man. I'm a visionary, but when them numbers, I, I, I don't know about, like, I'm slowly learning that, but man, you, you got them numbers down. That numbers game is on point. <laughs> and I am back out traveling. The ears are ringing less, so I'm trying to live a little more. Kind of had a rough year. I, I actually lost 45 pounds and I'm skinny as it is. Just kind of trying to clean out my body and, and everything else. But I travel, that's all numbers and strategy. I've been playing chess since I was eight years old, so I love all this stuff. Well, I respect you, fellow nerd, and I'm glad and that Aftrade is reaching out to you and that you're planning on talking to him. Yeah, that makes complete sense. I think it'll have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I tend to agree. All right, well, if anybody wants to reach out to you, would you like to go ahead and let them know how to go ahead and do so? Uh, virtual Growth on Discord, steamit.chat, and Gmail. And YR Grid, which I have Steamland. I didn't talk much about it, but that we'll be doing that again and eventually when I find the right people, I'm sure. Sounds good, man. Up now is App Trade. They're going to be talking about, uh, Dan is going to be talking about his project called App Trade. And it's going to, he's obviously the expert, but it's going to be um, probably some updates and a little bit of an introduction to, for those who are not familiar with it. Uh, just a real quick introduction. And I'll go ahead and I'll say, Dan, are you there? I'm going to tap on that mic. There he is. Silence. Hello, silence, my old friend. By the way, Fuzzy, since we got a little dead air here, I'll just mention that I was over at the Chairs Talk Forum and noticed that Xerox has weighed in on the witness increase in pay. So that's all I'll say. <laughs> I didn't want to sing the whole verse. <laughs> you got that song stuck in my head now. Uh, I've got this. I don't know if you guys have seen the Trolls movie, but since I've got a three-year-old, I've seen the Trolls movie. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've seen the Trolls movie so many times, it's probably, uh, it should probably uh, be in my mind for the rest of my life. Uh, but, <laughs> but this movie has that song in it. And I always think about like, Occasionally, I'll hear one of the songs, and now I can't get rid of it. You know, you just reminded me of old school, though. I think it was in old school they used that song. It's a good song. It's a really good song. Oh yeah, definitely. Hello, bitch shares, my old friend. I've come to trade with you again. That's a good idea. Because a debt should be completely free. I hear a music video coming along. 
Red and green candles do not bother me. Red and green are Christmas colors. Also the colors of NyQuil. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what? You are the one that took it in that direction, Fuzzy. I never brought drinking cough syrup into it. The kids call it lean. What do they call it? Lean. You've never heard of it? Sir. Uh. <laughs> Syrup, lean, codeine, purple drink, purple stuff, man, purple concoction, man. the Harry Potter. City. I remember a time when when smoking pot was like what the rebels did. Now it's like pot and cigarettes is what. Now I hear about these. What the hell is all this stuff? Pot is all about pot now. And lean came from Houston, man. <laughs> More like Scrooston. There's like designer drugs out now. It's like I don't even know what the hell you guys are talking about. <laughs> well, it started. Lean, it started with lean. the screw. Uh, Mr. Wang is right. It started with the like all the screw music because that was kind of like what introduced the whole. I don't know if you remember for a period of time they used to take like hip hop tracks and slow them all the way down, and so that was like the the musical form of Lean and all the popping pills and all that. Oh, it makes it's sense. Oh, it's it's so the artist is Chicago picked it up. Chicago picked uh, all the Chicago rappers picked it up back in 2012 and kind of spread it for a new generation. They weren't, you know, they weren't doing all the other like they were just smoking weed and and sipping lean or codeine or whatever you want to call it, purple drink and all that stuff. And so that's kind of what the kids do now. Purple drink. That's basically one of my characters, uh, Dirty D. He's a, a cook from the hood. That's, that's what he does a lot. Is he uh, sips promethazine and, and Sprite and tries to cook all drunk and <laughs> never finishes his, his show. He never finishes uh, the recipe because he's all throat. <laughs> I actually saw a guy who did a, a show kind of like that, man. He never finished, or what he finished was terrible. Yeah, I did. I've, I've done three episodes so far, and, and the one, the that biggest one, it was a Thanksgiving special, and he, uh, he, yeah, he blew up the house. You <laughs> 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 could just never finish a recipe and stuff. He just always messes up. Well, you know, the funny thing is, you you make a skit out of it. But there are real people out there. I, I won't say they blow up houses, but I will say that I've actually seen them. Because I don't know how, but I had a friend who would find some of the weirdest stuff when I was in the military. And he would always say, Fuzzy, or Justin, come look at this, you know. And half the time I wouldn't want to, but I would. Because I, <laughs> I didn't know if it was going to be funny or just something ridiculous. Um but it was this guy who would he would drink and he would cook and that and he would start cussing once he got to the point where he was too drunk that he could do stuff very well and he would mess it up and i don't know if it was a show i don't know he might have been playing this and just made it look real but man he, if he did he he fooled me cuz he was like you could see like he would sit there for like 30 40 minutes just sit there talking and then he'd start prepping as he was getting drunker. <laughs> App trade, you about ready? Try again? Just jump in, App Trade, whenever you're ready, man. Otherwise, I mean, I've got. I'm super ready. Good. I think I'm having difficulty oh. here. Can you no, hear me now? you're perfect. Oh, great. Great. Uh, <laughs> it's like panicking over here for two seconds. <laughs> no, that's because they were talking over when you had said something about when you had. Contributed to the conversation. I think people thought you were Mr. Wang or something. Got it. Got it. Oh, that's interesting. So you did say something. Yeah, he did. He said something. I heard him. Oh yeah, I think I think I did think that you were Mr. Wang at the time. Maybe you were like too far away from the mic or just like at an odd angle, so it sounded lower or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back into this. Um, App Trade Dan Daniel. What's your last name? How do I say your last name? It's Pineda. Okay, Pineda. I have to remember that. Um, you're going to be talking about App Trade. You're going to. Could you do us a favor and kind of give us quick synopsis for those who might be uh, new to the idea, and then maybe go into whatever updates that you might have. Yeah, sure. I'll try to fly through this uh, for sake of time. Uh, and again, thanks a lot for the discussion. I learned so much when I come here. I was uh, eavesdropping into the. Uh, bit shares uh, and it's just a wealth of information and I'm very very lucky there with you guys such a supportive community so I thank everyone for being here um, 
uh, app trade, what we are, a uh, stock market of apps, right? So this was born out of a frustration when I had a failing app back in 2010. I vowed not to release another app until I figured out, you know, how do you increase an app down? Um, how, what makes something go viral? And out of that uh, journey of discovering, I discovered that ad networks are quite Darwinian. Unless you already have a $50,000 or $100,000 budget, uh, you're not going to really put a dent into these cross-marketing platform. Uh, so independent developers are out leveraged, not just in marketing, but they're also out leveraged in, um, in finance as well in investment. And on the flip side, investors are also dealing with an issue. Uh, nine out of 10 businesses fail is this is still a very real show for them. And investing in individual projects is quite a risky. So what if uh, we can bundle a group of brands where each of these brands contributed a portion of into a what we call shared digital reserve. Uh, and uh, with that shared digital reserve, it would be used as collateral to attract further funding. That way, um, through a, a token, where each portfolio would ho host their own little token type and token market, would be able to issue a token backed by the collective revenue of that. And for the investors, they would like that because they could diversify their risk across a group of ideas. Uh, without actually owning those ideas. And the entrepreneurs or digital brands that come on board, they would be able to raise money um, and also without, without giving up equity, but they would also use the platform as some cross-marketing. What's unique about it is uh, each portfolio links all the apps within that portfolio via either deep links or some kind of outside of the app uh, partnership. It would be we would be able to cross pollinate those brands to create or manufacture these brand extensions from scratch uh, using otherwise competing entities, uh, brand developers that are, or digital developers that have their companies or their own brands and apps would be able to come together and coordinate their efforts so that if one app goes viral, the others have a high probability of joining that app because that user traffic. Real quick, what is Deep Links for the, if you can kind of make it like a Cliff's Notes version? Oh, sure. Very simply, Deep Links are nothing more than uh, links between one app content that links to content within another app. There's a very big debate in the mobile space called the Internet of Apps. Everyone's trying to figure out how that's going to actually happen. We have an Internet for web pages, uh, but there is no real mobile Internet. And we felt that uh, by having this incentivized glue that holds them all together, um, we would find various ways within one app, create, let's say, an offer wall that would link to the other apps inside that portfolio. But we also want to have more um, uh, discreet not discrete, but more uh, ambiguous uh, links that are, are indirect and be able to know that they're actual links. They would just be content within one app, whether that app links to an outside article, an outside author, uh, another app uh, content where you can have, let's say, uh, points that are shared within one uh, platform with another. And we can see that happening uh, with many platforms that have their own point system or token that represents things like that. That. Even newsletter part would be a great idea to find partnerships outside. But basically, a deep link is a, a link that's hidden inside of an app uh, that indirectly refers you to content within. A, but the main that's argument, interesting. main argument in the space, though, the reason why that's not possible now is because most apps are, and uh, uh, we see something like that happening in the future when cloud computing gets much more powerful, uh, where most apps in the future can offer some server uh, in the cloud, uh, and we're just going to use the mobile devices as the interfaces for these experiences, but the value is still going to be in the user and in that brand. Uh, so we still see, even with that uh, future coming full steam ahead, we still see a, a purpose for app trade app portfolios to dominate this in this area, especially when there's so many entrepreneurs that are competing for the same resources. I personally know what it's like to get turned down uh, for financing different sources. Um, and in that search, we found a marketplace uh, where developers were buying and selling app code from one another in a B2B setting, uh, similar to how real estate investors buy and sell real estate. Uh, one developer will buy code from another developer that doesn't have the resources to push that project, forward, but someone else will buy them out that does, and they will go and they'll pluck, pluck that uh, app from this marketplace, put it into their own portfolio, collect some data, but then they'll relist it back into the same marketplace where they found that original app, and they'll list it to resell it again 
but this time at a markup now that now that it has collected some data. Uh, but what really stood out about this marketplace is that uh, those that were bundling their apps portfolios saw the most volume. And that's when the light bulb really went off because uh, we discovered that companies like Disney, uh, Electronic Arts, they don't have the build apps from scratch. So they shop these marketplaces, these source code marketplaces, uh, these ready-made templates that they can go ahead and leverage really quickly. Oh, it's, it's pretty insane to think that this is an app market. Um, there are a lot of apps that are starting. I mean, if you go onto an app store, just Google apps, you know, Google store, what is it? Google play, um, alone has how many apps on it. I don't even know how many apps are on there, but I know that I, I don't have the time to look at all of them. That's for certain. So no one to, does. To, yeah, to see that there's the idea, I guess would be what I would go out and I would buy, you know, there might be a game pack of like five different games because I look at games a lot. Um, there might be a bundle where I can buy into five different game apps hoping that one of them will go viral because that'll pay me out too. Is that kind of the idea? As a consumer or as like an investor trying to find a new allocation? Oh, as an investor. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, that's the idea uh, to be able to um, have access to a portfolio where there's cash flow in that portfolio. The, the way that we modeled this was after real estate investment trusts. Uh, real estate investment trusts allow the public to invest in these large projects they, that they wouldn't be able to finance on their own. So banks would pull their uh, resources into a large fund and that fund would go out and buy property, invest in property in different ways. Now, to be clear though, we're, we're not a fund. We're building more of like a software as service platform that will provide a, I guess you can say a front end API that is a layer on top of the BitShares blockchain that talks to the open ledger um, because all the assets originate from open ledger. Uh, but the only thing that you'll be able to do on app trade is buy the tokens. There won't be any transfers, no trading. You have to go to open ledger to all that. And this is a perfect segue into our first announcement, which is uh, we are going ahead and uh, extending our um, our initial uh, token offering uh, to the 28th of February. Uh, a few th a few developments of uh, and the scenes that have uh, really exciting stuff. Uh, one, we're going to form a new entity out of Denmark with Open Ledger, a new partnership. It's going to be called uh, Open Ledger a App Trade APS. Uh, that's going to keep everything much more. And the Open Ledger will handle all the token origination, the issuance, the distribution. Uh, we only handle the marketing of the platform, and we handle the brokering of the sales of the apps. So this marketplace gave us this idea to have our own market where you have a permanent listing where you can sell the full rights of your app. Um, and it's not enough just to have a, a shingle, a place where you can sell your uh, the digital rights to your property, but we should be able to add value during your listing. And that's where the whole app portfolio incubation comes into play, where you incubate your app in an app portal first with the prospect or the long-term prospect of exit. And whatever valuation you think your project is worth, we will most likely agree with it because we get a little commission off of that um, in the future. So I'm trying to think, how, what do you mean by your own valuation? You'll probably agree with it. Sure. So we come across people that have source code lying on the side, uh, just collecting dust, and they have no idea that the source code can be leveraged and bought out. If they okay. have the 10,000 years or 10 years, they're still in that digital property that someone's interested in buying out. When I say buying out, I mean the complete transference of the rights, the, the, the URLs, all the social media handle, complete transference of ownership of proper party. That makes sense. Okay. Because there, there is a lot of, I'm sure there are a lot of projects that are even partially finished that still that would be valuable, right? Like it's almost like scrap metal. You can t still turn it into what you need it to with just a little bit extra. And if you can get it cheap enough and you've got the equipment, then why not? So there is a big market, I'm sure, for that. It's a growing market, but it's a niche market. And I think what is knock on main investment to tell them that this market exists um, and, uh, and to grow this, this back 
uh, this hidden market. It's a really hidden marketplace. Not too many people know, unless you're yeah. really in the game, um, really making pumping out apps. I really know much about this. I mean, most people are familiar with SourceForge. Um, Invato Marketplace is a great example of marketplace. Uh, but we're also looking at uh, digital marketplaces like the Unity assets. Those assets, those libraries of assets, are very, very valuable. Uh, I know private buyers that actually invest individual developers that build these catalogs because you know if you try to sell a tree uh, a mountain a map uh, whatever it is uh, a texture a packet a, a package of textures if you're trying to sell that on the unity store by yourself you may not get uh, much traction but if you can bundle that into a catalog then you have a better shot and i know this guy that does that that this exact i can't wait to uh, work with him on this platform because it makes it streamlines his activity uh, and i have a bombshell of an announcement to make right now actually on that note this is a perfect example of what we kind of want to what, what we want to provide not kind of will provide, is uh, a big buyers to shop these markets and my announcement um part of my announcement today is to say that i have a have a person that has a buyer uh, that has a war chest of five billion dollars and they are looking to buy out fintech companies or fintech based apps uh you can contact jenny q ta that's jenny j-e-n-n-y-q t-a jenny q ta find her on twitter find her on instagram or if you can just email me at uh info at app trade dot io with your pitch deck business plan if you have a fintech company tech based app and to spin off these people are not interested in investing they're interested in buying it out they want to buy out the entire property they asked us if, they, if we wanted to be bought out but we're at pre-revenue so we're not entertaining equity nor any buyouts but we would be happy to broker um this opportunity we were going to wait to the platform is ready so that we can ensure that we're in the middle of that deal but this money is everywhere so we're pretty confident there's going to be more buyers in the future right now they're looking uh, projects immediately to buy out so if you have a, a fintech app or a fintech company and you know someone that has a fintech app and tech company Company. I mean, pretty much anything in block class has been free to reach out to me directly to Q. Uh, she's right now for pitch decks. Oh, well, so this is a fund that is looking to buy out these fintech apps. So you're talking about like, so, so how does this work if there's a bundle uh, and they're connected with this? Uh, yeah, so right now uh, it, it has little to do with our platform only because the relationship is hot right now and the momentum and quickly. I just got notice of this opportunity about a week ago and we put in our bid, even though we're not ready to sell, they still asked, they even asked us at pre be willing to sell. Um, kind of crazy we can ask that number, but we have a number and uh, floated that number on over. We don't have any intentions to sell, but we're kind of curious. At the, I mean, they've already... Uh, purchased three companies. Uh, I, I'm allowed to say even that, but uh, one of those companies were $100 million. $5 million is a lot to go around. And uh, I th they're all, they are willing to have uh, you still work on your own app and then your own compass. As far as far as the criteria, I wish I can give information about it, but you would have to send your pitch deck and your business plan for that particular project. But um, if, I, if I may also, I want to go ahead and just move on to answer a particular question. I, I get this question a lot as to why we chose the uh, why we chose to do the token sale and um, mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I'm a fan of open source innovation and prosumer and uh, one of the things that drew me to blockchain technology is that it's pretty much the technology that will allow us to express this business model of open source uh, or open innovation where you open up your internal business process to someone outside your walls. And by having a, a master token, we can create these promotional bounties to uh, make the platform self-sustaining so that we have a, an army of brand ambassadors constantly bringing us apps or they're bringing us sponsors, people that want to buy token. If you bring an app to the platform, to me, you will get a... Uh, a supply of the tokens that that app of, of the portfolio that that app ends up in. Uh, and if we sell or broke the sale of that app the person that heard that app should get a and we'll use uh, our official app group packet a little bit later closer to the launch of the platform but that's something that we want to have in place uh, now to let folks know that we're not selling all of our token supply but we're setting aside a significant master token supply for these promotional bound to use them as well as a way to pay these folks for apps capital um, our platform is not to be mistaken 
taken with uh, crowdfund equity. It's not one big fund uh, backed by a bunch of apps. It's a platform that features a marketplace portfolio and each portfolio is its own mini market um, uh, issuing their own tokens backed by cash flow, ro digital royalty stream, not a debt security, um, not an equity security. It's uh, it's classified more account receivable, pulling uh, account receivable. To be more specific, it's a non horse uh, factor that we we onboard everybody on publish. It's an outside off participation agreement, and it's a two year agreement uh, to ensure that they constantly make their payment. And the value of the blockchain in this, can you get into that a little bit for us? Uh, in what regard? Um, why you chose to use a blockchain at all, as opposed to just creating a centralized system? Because it's kind of cool that you you've married these two cultures together. Is is really how I see it? Like with the app. These apps, app markets seem like they're kind of similar to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. They they really marry together well. They really do. And the cultures mar marry very well too because everything blockchain, I like to call it post-transactional. Post-transactional. And uh, Mr. Wang, what you do uh, by volunteering your services first and then you get your payment as a value added later on, that's post -trans That's prosumerism or post-transactionalism where in the past people say hey bud you know I, I gotta get paid up front and then i do the work where i see blockchain uh, facilitating more prosumerism where people have to first and through a credibility uh system it's all reputation based right uh that person would get value on the back end from the system like maybe i'm jumping ahead but we have plans to uh issue a a or to, to take time, right, to take uh, hours of the day and create a currency out of it. Um, and that would require uh, time banking to do a mm -hmm. whole system where, you you know, give an hour, you get an hour. Um, there's no real way that you can uh, express that. There's no media in the real world to tie down that business. You would have to have lots of agreements in many different places. But by having a token and having the blockchain, all that activity is a transparent. Everyone sees the people in action. action. They see the flow in action. The I mean, the value in action, and uh, it's just perfect for uh, increasing that trust for a very, you know, very experimental model. Uh, quite frankly, it's very experimental. It's a, it's 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 practically a theory uh, at this point approaching with. But the blockchain allows us allow the people that are buying into the system to literally see where it's going. And I like the the memo feature, the fact that the blockchain is also a messaging, uh, not just a value transfer system, where you yeah. up upload your is to show your supporters hey do that forever um, yeah is, and, are you saying that's a variation of what i'm offering oh absolutely uh absolutely great great examples uh want to have certain musicians come on board and let's say they give up their uh portion of their um earnings from their digital download uh in return paying 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 back the people that supported them so that they work um in the past you would have to kind of do that work first and show show that that result to your supporters and then your supporters give you money kind of like the kickstarter model where it's like you got to get the money first and reach the goal then that money is unlocked where this this what blockchain lets us do is kind of fund as you go fun yeah fund as you go it's a different system it's a completely different way of thinking um and there's no real way to trust people without having a, a system in the background that can collect reputation or quantify reputation right and i think that's what the blockchain does is it quantifies yeah. uh, credibility in a lot of in a transparent fashion it's it's very it's a it's amazing to sit here and think that all of the things that rec that are required for an ecosystem like you're saying you have to have reputation at some level in some way shape or form and it does facilitate that in ways that i don't think i don't know that if that they've ever been possible prior to this i don't think so either and um that's why I'm really happy to be a part of this. Uh, we might mess around and indirectly create a massive volume of blockchain. We know they're on the blockchain. Uh, like our, our app, they're interested in selling their apps, uh, getting cross-marketing, and possibly getting funded. Nothing in that description has anything to do with blockchain. Whereas uh, with the investors, same thing with them. Um, they want to diversify their risk, and nothing in that description has to do with blockchain. But we are leveraging a particular uh, blockchain, particular 
permissions in place. So it's not just any blockchain, right? Um, the BitShares blockchain, uh, it's Graphene and BitShares, what that allows us to do is create some centralized control mechanisms so that we can uh, not uh, guarantee security, but to mitigate these. So I like the idea of being able to roll out your token, um, the BO be able to restrict trading on tokens for a certain amount of time until you have to certainly identify a bad actor. You can take uh, or seize the asset um, and even having whitelists uh, in order to be part of a portfolio's token market, you have to be white that. But, uh, are, and, and with these mechanisms in place, that's the reason why we chose the blockchain. It was not enough just to have promissory note agreements with everybody. Um, it's just too much it's too much regular exposure at that time. And not to say that there was no regulatory exposure with this, but it makes it easier for us to show that we're at least attempting to follow rules. And uh, BidShares makes that much easier for us to do. The reputation factor, man, that really does open a door for new ideas and a way to approach stuff. Yeah, I agree. Well, and the transparent ledger that, you know, that is unalterable. Of course, you can alter it, but there's a trail that it has been altered. Uh, it does facilitate the uh, the ability to have this type of reputation system uh, as even maybe a service in and of itself. Have you, have you thought, as I know that you've talked a lot about supporting graphene chains, uh, Dan, but whenever you... Uh, Talk about that. How do you f foresee these apps or these graphing chains uh, being supported? Sure. So everyone has a token and everyone has a crowd sale. Everyone has their own internal efforts behind that one token or one project. But what if you can pull those projects into a group, which is like a mutual fund, but for tokens? We don't know which token market or which project is actually going to take off. Neither do the supporters buying into that. My proposition to the BitShares community is to create such a portfolio as part of the flagship portfolios. I already started talking. Who's, he's really interested in e -Steam, the eSteam app into the mix. Good. And I believe us, Solly uh, and I were supposed to, I think we're still going to see of uh, value. I'm really Good. curious to know what uh, virtual growth is doing because this is the very first time where I finally wrap on what virtual, uh, having bots. If I'm understanding it correctly, uh, you can automate stop losses and with well he's doing it by hand but we are and he's he is going to be working with the bitshares uh community as a as a bitshares community member right um to to kind of help with uh, we're going to have a trading competition on the bitshares network so that i think fun. that sounds fun that that sounds like uh, something to drive because you have to give these people that otherwise um, be trading on the stock or any other any other uh, world give them a, an incent incentive that they couldn't find and, and that's what the lets us does is very unions for a, uh, allocation a hedge uh, fund manager they're all allocated uh, most of the cryptocurrencies in the space are backed by no different. The difference is that our promise will be backed by cash. It's not going to, and the reason why we're using a token, the perfect, I guess you can say, payout tensor to use it and fuse our dip payment. So that's that's a plan that I have. I'm looking forward to talking to any BitShares community that has an app that wants to be part of this flag show. So I think uh, what we're going to be future, since it's after the first, is we're going to have the meetings. Uh, I like the, I like this platform for it. I hate sure. The support is Discord also that we want to start doing patients because there's a lot that's happening or private and that's really what's taking up so much time. So if we can have a place where I can come in and ask questions, yep. just all 100% apps and apps. Um, and just so that everyone else we will only issue the or uh, we'll host once, but if ultimately raise estimate, uh, we'll give back the, the bit the holder. I personally stand by that. Um, but if we do have to, the goal pulse will announce it beforehand. We're filling our goal is two in the next three to six and cap it at five. Uh, and we'll include those milestones uh, website that way people have. Um, and our intention of doing the ICO was to, with our existing off the chain. So we want to indoctrinate them onto the blockchain because I think tokens are clean, quite frankly. That's a good way of putting it. Now, real quick, with these apps, are they able to be, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It could be on a blockchain like BitShares, or it could be its own blockchain. Are you talking about the apps that were Yeah, or, or they're not blockchain-based at all. I mean, it, does it talk about it? Are you guys focusing in any way, shape, or form on any of that, or, or no? Uh, we're open to all apps, on-demand apps, virtual reality apps, dating apps, uh, social networking apps, chatbots, blogs, article URLs, anything that generates 
cash flow. And we define intangible goods or apps as any intangible experience as long as the end, end product is intangible and there's a cash flow tied to brand. Okay, so you won't even really talk about the fact that something has a blockchain. You're going to you're going to feature the app com- just by its merits and what it's doing, and these apps will all have a token on BitShares, regardless of whether they are blockchain based or not. And but the question I guess well I still have the question I guess because what if a token uh, what if one of these apps is another chain or relies on another chain? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, no. Um, Every app won't will not have its own token. They will be coming under one token. Uh, they will be uh, sharing their cash flow into a portfolio reserve, and that portfolio will essentially be a, uh, one token type. Okay, so a bundle token. That's correct. Backed by the apps, the cash in that. So there'll be apps yeah. coming in and out of the portfolio, but the real asset portfolio cash that reserve that stands true. Because for the token holder, they can hold that forever, right? But for the publishers, it's only a two year agreement. So within that time, we expect to increase the value of that app during its list with the end result of an equity. Because through a private dashboard, um, the supporters, the sponsor participants in that board will see each other's data. So they'll have, they'll be internal leaderboard to see what attract the portfolio alongside each app's analyst. So a uh, supporter, a token buyer s- sees something. They should go in and make that offer before someone can buy out that app uh, to own the rights. So the way that we market this and solicit the financial com- is a way for them to diversify risk mitigate the risk so it's a group of ideas test drive right they're test driving these investments they're not really into it so it's a, a great arms of the way from your investor want to date or marrying them <laughs> well stated well stated well we are running a little bit over um however app trade i i i, I seem to feel personally like app trade is going to be a a pretty big deal um at least, at least it's going to make waves. I think in the crypto sphere, uh, just because of the tokenification and use of something like the BitShares blockchain, coupled with apps, um, whether they're DApps or or just the you know the regular everyday addictive app that my mom uses uh, whenever she's playing Bubble Witches or whatever the heck that thing's called, um, you know. <laughs> apps, <laughs> apps are the way forward, man. It, it doesn't. I saw a commercial kind of talking about like bridging the the generations, but they both love their apps, and it is, it you know, it's trite, but it's true. So it, I very much look forward to, to hearing more updates, and I know that there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the ecosystem, and a lot of people who. Uh, might be interested in working with you guys in some way, shape, or form if you're interested. I'd be excited to work with anyone that w- that would like to <laughs> take a take a chance on us and uh, give give us that, that chance to uh, that shot to push push your your property. We're app brokers, but we're also app publishers. I have my own apps that we're gonna throw into. I got this idea for us to raise something. Clicked once I bundled them and said, "Hey, I have a group of apps." That- well, I guess I'm gonna have to put power down my fuzzy uh, my official fuzzy account a little bit and put in some money on this because I'm going to have to get some dang tokens. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to do it. I just got my internet, man. Um, Well, anyway, thank you for showing up. We'll talk about this a little bit more during the after party. Um, But I will thank everybody for showing up this week. Uh, It's, it's kind of, it's one of those things where we have a lot of different things coming down the pike and everybody's busy, but I do appreciate that everybody joins up and and really participates, listens in, and I, I would ask that everybody also consider, you know, the ways that you're valuable to the projects that come on here as well, um, because everybody here has a value pro- proposition. Uh, once you figure that value proposition out, you can add it to the equation, and it just helps the synergy. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to the people who, who are offering these things and, and try to help out in the ways that you can. It doesn't always have to be money. Um, but with that said, thank you for joining up and we'll see you guys next week.
Oh, my God.